So before we can get into the project, there's a, a couple steps. And they involve converting all of our source files over to XML. Now, depending on the file, there's a couple different ways to do this. There's a lot of different files involved with a forms application. We have FMBs, OLBs, and MMBs. Those three go through the forms to XML conversion tool. That was available from 9i and 10g. And that's the reason you need to migrate over first. Also, you might be using PLSQL libraries or PLL files. There's another utility that you can use to convert those. And finally, uh, report files. And in the case of reports, all you need to do is open the module and, and, and reports, and you can just go to save as XML. So what we're going to do here is take those two modules we talked about for customer and orders and convert those from the FMBs over to XML. Now, once we have our XML, we can then start our Apex conversion project. So the forms to XML utility is a command line utility. And all you need to do is enter some code that looks like this. Form to XML, FRMF to XML, and then specify the file that you're converting. Notice it's the FMB, not the executable or the compiled version. And I'm in where that particular file is. So I'll run that. And that completes the conversion of the orders module. I now need to do the customers module. And we're done. So I'll minimize this and open the window that I had open before. So we see the FMBs here. Now if I scroll down, we'll see these two new XML files. And notice what it did. It just took the .fmb before and changed that to an underscore and appended a .xml to it. OK, so these are the new XML files we can use to start our forms conversion project. So at this point, I can go ahead and on into Apex. And let me go ahead and log out and log back in. I'm logging into the Summit workspace in my Apex instance. And for those of you that don't know, real quick, Apex is broken down into three main parts. The application builder, very similar to the forms builder utility. The SQL workshop, where we can work with the database backend. Of course, you could use tools like Toad and SQL developer, but this is very convenient if you need a, a real quick web access. And then there's some utilities built in as well. In the bottom right here, or I should say on the, just the right side, under migrations, we have application migrations. And that's where we want to go to do the conversion. I don't have any migration projects yet. I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Call it Summit Conversion. And notice the type here. I can actually do access or forms. In this case, of course, we're just doing forms. Now, on the bottom, I see there's a Browse button that allows me to select the files that I want to convert. We'll start here with the customers, FMB XML. You can read that XML. And we'll upload another file, the orders FMB XML. Now, if you have a lot of files and you haven't converted them all yet, don't worry. You can always add files to a project later on. You don't have to do it in the beginning here. OK, but we're good to go. I'll go ahead and click Finish. And this will create the project for us. Now, what it's doing, it's reading that XML and determining everything that's going on within those particular modules. So when it's finished, we're taken into the actual project. But I want to go back real quick, where we can see all of the projects in our workspace. You can see the new project I've just created. That's the only one we have here. We have two form modules, 76 triggers. It can read all that metadata from the XML and tell us exactly what we have going on. I want to click on Edit here to show you something else. If you look in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you see that it's also identified a account of components, 252. And it's marked some as being complete. In other words, you could just convert this app already, and those would be good to go. 
Now, they may require some tweaking on the other side, but they're at least good enough for conversion at this point. Percent complete at the bottom is the key to the form's conversion process. You're looking for 100%. Now, some of the things you can do before you've converted. Others, you cannot. You'll have to do those post-conversion. In fact, that's where you'll spend the majority of your time, post-conversion. But you can continue to use this project within Apex until you're at 100%, both pre- and post-conversion. Okay, so that's what we're looking to do. Now, before we get in and start making some changes, I just want to show you exactly what we need to do. We have our project created. So step one, we need to identify what exactly is going to make it through the conversion. Now, when you go from an environment like Forms to any HTML-based solution, you need to rethink a few things because the platforms are completely different. So the user interface, the user experience, the layout, it's not all going to be a one-to-one. -one. What we're really concerned with are blocks and items. We'll talk more about that in a second here. But that's really what's going to be converted, your data blocks and the items within them. Notice the note about annotation at the bottom. This is really important. And as you see, uh, and I'll show you while we're doing the conversion, there's in the bottom here a little note uh, far right in the image. Is it applicable? So you can identify those things that you know they were necessary in forms, but not so much in an HTML-based environment, and just mark them as not applicable. In that case, your percent complete goes up without having to do any work. Now, if they are applicable, but you can't complete them pre-conversion, just leave them as incomplete. Write a little note as to what needs to be done, or if in further investigation needs to be done, post-generation, and then you can use those later to make sure everything is complete. All right, let's take a look. So I'm going to go into my new project. And remember, we uploaded two files for this one. So here's our customer's FMB and the order's FMB. Notice it's identified all the blocks. But before we get into that, I'm just going to click on the customer's FMB. And here we have an interactive report. By the way, for those of you who don't know, interactive reports are extremely powerful reports within Apex. And this conversion utility uses them very heavily. So you can create custom reports however you need to see them. So in my case, I created a custom report called Applicable Objects. Now, the default view is something like this. But if I switch over here, notice I get a, a very succinct menu that I can use to, to navigate what I feel is in need of attention. We'll go back over here for now, the default working report. And what we're looking at really are the implementation details. When you're new to Forms to Apex conversion, you'll want to make sure you read that. And basically what it's going to tell you, I can summarize, is this is what's going to come over. But of course you still need to track all the other things. Now canvases and coordinates, these don't really mean anything in a traditional web-based solution. So of course they're not applicable. They're automatically marked as such for you. Some of the things you'll need to say manually whether or not they're applicable, but some of them are automated. So we have everything that you would normally see in a forms application. Triggers are where you'll spend some of your time post-generation. 